If one of your friends or someone you love has been diagnosed with anorexia, you're probably feeling pretty worried right now and you may have some questions. That's normal and hopefully this video will help answer some of these. Let's discuss how someone might develop anorexia, what keeps the illness around and what might help someone get better. Anorexia nervosa, commonly called anorexia, is an eating disorder. It is a psychological illness that most commonly affects young people between the ages of 12 and 25. Anorexia is more common in girls, but around 10% of people with anorexia are male. A person who has anorexia is usually underweight, has an intense fear of gaining weight, and a disturbance in the way they see their own body. For example, even though someone with anorexia might be very underweight, they might see themselves as overweight. Food intake is usually restricted, so they might not eat much and they might purge. That is, try to get rid of calories from the body by vomiting, extreme exercising or taking laxatives. Let's start by busting a myth about anorexia. Anorexia is not a lifestyle choice. It's a serious mental illness, so even though it might be hard to understand why your friend or loved one isn't eating, Try not to blame them for it. The reason someone might develop anorexia are actually quite complicated. There is no one thing that is thought to cause anorexia. Rather, it is usually a combination of things. Some biological, some psychological, and some social or cultural. For example, from a biological perspective, certain combinations of genes can put someone at a higher risk for developing anorexia. Genes are something you're born with, so you can't choose to be at risk for anorexia any more than you can choose what colour your eyes are. Researchers have also found there are some differences in how the reward system in the brain works for people at higher risk of anorexia. You know that amazing feeling you get when something really great happens? That's your brain's reward system at work. A neurotransmitter in the brain called dopamine is responsible for that feeling and it seems like dopamine may act a little differently in people who are likely to develop anorexia. Psychologically, certain personality traits have also been linked to an increased risk of an eating disorder. These are negative emotionality, which is the tendency to have negative feelings, perfectionism, the tendency to want everything to be just right, and negative urgency, the tendency to take rash action when distressed. Another thing which has been linked to anorexia is low self-esteem. Sometimes, when people feel worthless or bad about themselves, this can add to the risk factors for developing anorexia. Our social and cultural environment can also act as a risk factor. In our society, the thin body type is idealised, and it's everywhere. In advertising, social media, magazines, films and TV. We have a lot of exposure to images of bodies that are often unrealistic and usually photoshopped. Research has shown that when we are constantly exposed to these kinds of ideals, we begin to internalise them, and some of us can start to feel like our own body is not thin enough. Sometimes, even the people we hang out with could be a risk factor. For example, if there's a lot of body shaming going on in a friendship group, Sometimes, people who make comments about other people's weight are insecure about their own bodies as well. But either way, it's not always a healthy environment to be a part of. It's important to remember that in someone who develops anorexia, a combination of these things is thought to have come together. Some people call it the perfect storm. It's also important to know that having these risk factors doesn't mean that someone will develop anorexia, but it does mean that the risk is increased for some people. So, if someone is unlucky enough to develop anorexia, what keeps it around? What makes it worse? Research has shown that when extreme undereating occurs, changes happen in the brain that can affect the thinking process and the way the body responds to things such as the taste of food. And remember how we mentioned dopamine and the reward system before. This system can also change and become highly sensitive as a result of food restriction. Just imagine if the taste of food wasn't all that pleasurable anymore and you felt that amazing dopamine feeling when you restricted food intake instead of when you ate food. Low self-esteem can lead someone to define their self-worth in terms of how their body looks and sometimes people believe that the only thing that makes them worthy is being a certain weight or looking a certain way. If you're also a perfectionist, this may lead to the idea that the body must be better and better or thinner and thinner. And this idea is constantly reinforced by exposure to pictures of celebrities and models who are unrealistically thin. 
And where did we get the idea that thinner is better? It's a cultural thing. At different times in history, curvy, bigger bodies were idolised. When someone with anorexia sees an Instagram post of an impossibly thin model, a magazine cover, or maybe hears a comment about somebody's weight, this happens pretty often, right? It can raise their anxiety. Not eating can become a way for some people to alleviate or control that anxiety. It's easy to see how a number of different factors can work together, not only to increase the risk of anorexia for some people, but also to keep it around. The good news is, there is hope. There are lots of treatment options available for people with anorexia. And even though we're not saying it's easy, recovery is possible. Helping somebody to recover from anorexia isn't as simple as just getting food into their bodies. As you can see, we need to think about how we can address biological, psychological, social and cultural factors. What might this look like? Well, nutrition management is an important part of treatment. For example, slowly and in small steps trying to return to less restricted eating. If anxiety is playing a large role in the eating disorder, sometimes medication can help. Therapy can also help to challenge unhelpful thoughts or beliefs. For example, that body weight is connected to worth, or that the images we are bombarded with by society are realistic and something to aim towards. And what about what you can personally do to help? Well, watching this video is already a step in the right direction. You care about your friend or loved one and want to find out more about what's going on for them. Continuing to educate yourself about anorexia will be helpful in increasing your understanding and sympathy towards your friend. Support your friend without judgement. Remember that anorexia is an illness that could happen to anyone. Talk to your friend openly about your concerns and what they might be feeling. They may feel embarrassed or ashamed about their eating habits. Support them to seek help or go online for more information. Make sure you're not buying into or spreading the idea that people's body weight is in some way important. Try to value people for being caring and kind, not the way they look. Foster a supportive and body positive culture among your friends. For more information, check out thebutterflyfoundation.org.au or visit reachout.com. If you want to talk to someone for information or support, you can call Kids Helpline on 1800 555 1800. And remember, if it's an emergency, call triple zero.